nature's God. That has always been a part of this country for 240 years. And I think that the Constitution obviously is the law of the land, but we need to understand that when that was created, it was with, without question, that, the, the, that, that nature and nature's laws and the God of nature had much to do with that formation. And so therefore, I, I agree that every bill that is passed should, have, should pass constitutional muster. Clearly, it has to be. We don't have to recreate the will. Those men in 1787 were brilliant in Philadelphia. Wise beyond their years. Madison and Hamilton were 32 and 36 years of age, respectively. That is mind-boggling to me, that they were that wise, that smart. And I believe that inside that Constitution, we have the ability to solve our problems of this country and the challenges based upon the rights that are guaranteed to us in that document. Thank you. We move on to our next question. This one will be, uh, the first answer will be from Ms. Alster. Alster, I apologize. Let's talk about term limits. Should there be term limits on members of the U.S. Congress? Why or why not? And what term limit would you support? In other words, how many years would you support as a term limit on Congress? Yes, I support term limits, I believe, in citizen legislators, not career politicians. Um, as I have said, I've never run for office. I'm not interested in the, in the politics of this whole deal, but I'm very interested in the policy, and I'm very concerned about what's going on in this country. And I think that at certain times in this country, certain people who are equipped with certain gifts need to step up and, and, and assume a certain responsibility, sacrifice, if you will, for their country. Um, term limits, is what I am in favor of it. I believe it's a systemic problem in Washington uh, that people go up there, they make a career out of it, they become incumbents. Everyone knows that the incumbent raises more money and that generally speaking, though I guess when we go home tonight and we see what happens in these 12 states, uh, we may be surprised by, like uh, Mr. Brown in Massachusetts that the incumbents may not win, but historically they have because they have the power to raise the money. And unfortunately, if you have the money, uh, you can usually buy the city. That's a sad commentary for what's going on in this country. I have agreed to co-sponsor Senator DeMint's uh, companion bill that he has introduced into the Senate. It is longer than I think, but it's better than what we have now, and therefore I would re be willing to offer the companion bill. It's three, limited to three terms of, in the House, which would be six years, two years in the Senate, which would be 12 years. Thank you. Mr. Sutherland. You know, in my house, when we, made up a, when we made a mess growing up, there would be discipline. And then after that discipline, we would be given the responsibility to clean up the mess we made. I think term limits makes us all feel better. Term limits says that it was somebody else that created this mess. And it makes us sleep good at night, conscious-wise. We have the government that we the people have accepted. And in my family growing up, that didn't pass the mustard if I tried to blame my brother for something I did. That didn't happen. I got whippings for stuff I did. My brother never got whippings for stuff I did. And after the discipline of the mess I made, I was required to clean it up. I think that what we would do is, is we would enact term limits and then we'd go back to our lives we go back to our lives and we'd say, well, you know what, they're bad, so therefore they're only in there six years, and I think our government would continue to spiral out of control. It is we the people. We have term limits, and those term limits are every two years. We've talked here tonight, three, all three of us have talked about Congressman Paul Ryan. What a brilliant man from Wisconsin. He knows the budget like nobody in Washington, D.C. I'd hate to have to send a man like that home because we want them to run it without we the people deciding. So, when we as a country start talking about limiting our freedoms to vote who we want to vote for, we need to give careful thought when we start voting ourselves less freedoms. And I think that those men in 1787, they were smart. They didn't believe in, in lifelong politicians. They believed in citizen legislators. And we have 
what they voted on in existence today. Mr. Shaw. Absolutely in support of term limits. When you look back to the original intent of the founding fathers, they said these individuals should, should go, they should serve their country, and then they should return to their lives. I don't think they ever envisioned a federal government growing as massive as it did with the salaries that they have, with the perks and the power, a retirement program, a Cadillac health care plan. These individuals are living far better than the majority of Americans. I don't think that was the original intent of what the founding fathers you know, saw for service to this great nation if you were an elected official. And that's what it's morphed into. So I support term limits. Anything less than 10 years, I'm going to vote for that. Originally, I didn't think term limits were going to be necessary because, obviously, we have elections every two years. But now what we're seeing, when you look at Alan Boyd's um, political uh, his campaign account, at some points, it's between 1.8 and 1.6, 1.4, depending on how many commercials he's running. But the majority of his money is political action committee money. It's bought and paid for by industries out there. So he's able to control the message. He's able to get to the airwaves. He's able to run radio. He's able to run TV. He's able to run the print ads. He's able to mail to you, at your expense, everything he's doing. So we have lost the power. That's why we now have a populist president. And yes, I think we do need term limits because every so often, those individuals are going to turn over. And in the Air Force, we cycle through every four years. We lose great pilots and squadrons. You know what? There's another great pilot right behind him. And we don't know where the next Paul Ryan is. And maybe we can bump Paul Ryan up to the Senate. He can do some more good there. So I'm totally in support of term limits to get the power back to you and get the money out of politics to some extent. Thank you. The next question, we move on to the subject of taxes. Please describe your position. By the way, the first, Mr. Sullivan will be the first to speak. Describe your position on taxes in general, and then address three particular proposed taxes, the fair tax, the flat tax, and the value added tax. First of all, I think what you need to do, it only makes sense that um, you attack spending before you start attack, start addressing taxing. Um, uh, and, and that's the thing that Washington does not want to address. They do not want to address spending. Now there are several, uh, so I, I believe as far as our current tax structure, I think it's complicated. I think it's hard to understand. I think it is uh, unfair uh, to many. When you have almost 50% of this population that pays nothing in taxes, how in the world could you ever appreciate anything that you didn't have anything invested in it? My father always made me come up with a down payment. Now, he would help me. My parents would help me when I wanted to buy something. But I had to have some skin in the game. And as long as I had skin in the game, I cared for it, I took care for it, I managed it, and, and it was it was what uh, and I had value in it and so therefore I think with taxes obviously there's the fair tax and the flat tax and that's what we get asked uh, of the most I will tell you one of the things and I, and I like uh, some of the parts of all of those but I'll tell you one of the things as a as a strict defender of small business I'm sure that those who pass the fair tax or would, would pass the fair tax would love for me to be the tax collector of the government as a small business and they do not want to give me any consideration and I say any consideration because the little bitty penance that they put in that bill in that that proposal really doesn't help me pay for the person that would collect their monies I will tell you this I'm tired as a small business of doing and doing and doing for the federal government with no recognition whatsoever I will tell you this also about the, the fair tax uh, in going forward is that it says that the, the 16th amendment should be repealed but voting the fair tax in will not repeal the 16th amendment it just says it should we need to make sure i honor that bill thank you mr shaw with regard to taxes hate them hate them absolutely hate them but when you look at our tax code 70 000 pages and the individuals that write it charlie wrangle all i'm really saying is i didn't know i had an apartment in new york 
He's not paying taxes on his apartment, extra property that he 